Hello everybody, my name is Provis, and welcome to Dream Engines Nomad Cities. This is a brand new survival city builder that went into early access just yesterday, so it is hot off the presses. If you're wondering what this game is like, imagine that Tim Burton played Factorio for the first time and thought, oh, I'm gonna get into video games from now on, and you're actually kinda halfway there. This game definitely takes a lot of inspiration from titles like Factorio or They Are Billions, but adds it in its own unique twists to keep things interesting and definitely has a very creative aesthetic, which I really appreciate. Let's go ahead and jump into a new game. We will be playing as the Junk Lords. And as far as difficulty, you can have a very, very easy game or a very, very hard game. I'm going to go for something kind of middle of the road here, but I'm going to increase the number of resource nodes on the map just to make sure that I have plenty of stuff to show you guys. And here we are. This is my little avatar. His name is Tiny. He's a robot that punches monsters and constructs buildings in order to build up our nomad city around the dream engine. All right. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing is wander around the map and start looking for some resource nodes that I can exploit. Now, these little guys right here are the kinds of monsters that are going to be popping up throughout the map and eventually in big scary waves that try to take out your city. We want to clear a bunch of these guys out. You can see I've already lost quite a bit of health, but I'm sure we're going to be fine. We can either shoot with a crossbow or punch. Either one is completely viable. Let's see. Now what I'm looking for is a bloodwood node. It is a giant bloody tree that we will gather some resources from and send them back to the base. But finding one can be a little bit on the tricky side. Or relatively easy. I don't know. Here's one right here, for example. So let's go ahead and clear out the little mobs that are currently defending it. Gather up some of their corpses. These guys right here, they're ranged mobs. I don't remember what they're called exactly. Um, they are called... Do, do Dreps, I think? Yes, Dreps. That's the name of the monsters. And the little beetle ones are basically melee attackers. And uh, over time, they get larger and scarier, so... Be ready for some of that. There are other mobs as well, but I haven't experienced all of them. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do now that I found a Bloodwood node is I'm going to hit the space button, and that's going to pull me out of action mode and into building mode. We can't fight here. We can just construct things. Going to click on this, and I'm going to spend a resource we have up here called Flux in order to build up a gatherer, like so. And now it's going to start outputting Bloodwood logs. We need to start carting that stuff back home, so I'm going to go ahead and start placing down some belts, kind of like this and try sending it all the way back home as much as we can because I want to process it a little bit closer to the home base. So right over here should be good enough. Now, once the bloodwood logs arrive, we need to start processing them into planks. So I'm going to place down a wood warper or maybe a couple of them. Actually, you'll notice there's kind of a red circle right along here. And this represents our power grid and how much range we currently have. If we want to extend that, we could build up a Tesla tower, let's say right here. And voila, we now have a bit more space to work with, which is just fine and dandy. So one, two, three for now, wood warpers is probably going to be plenty. Then we take a belt and create an uh, input there, there, and there. And then we're going to take these guys and we are going to create a quick little output and then input into our dream engine, which functions a lot like a stockpile. All right, so the bloodwood logs are on the way, and this is going to start processing what we need. Now, in order to make some of these buildings work, you may have noticed they do have a maintenance upkeep involved. Part of it is the flux. Some of it is going to be power, of which we have an excess right now. And then workers. I only have one worker remaining, so we should probably go ahead and start increasing, let's say, our housing in order to start getting some more worker population. So I'm gonna build out two houses real quick using a few logs. We're gonna create an output of food right here and then drop them off into these little houses. If you can supply food, then over time they'll produce at least a couple of extra workers for each of these houses. All right, so this should be enough just to kind of start things off for the moment. Though you may notice we are now running a deficit on food. We will need to start producing more, but of course for that I'm gonna need power and I'm going to need the workers and so on. Let's start looking for some other resources. I already found one up over here, and this is called Featherstone. Featherstone is something else we know we are going to want to process. So I can go ahead and click over here and build a gatherer, kind of like before. Does have a maintenance and a flux upkeep and does take some workers. I have only just enough workers for this right now. Let's go ahead and take some more of these over here. There we go. We'll get a belt down over here, and then we need to get a stone worker. Um, I probably want to increase the power radius out just a little bit more, kind of like that. There we go. And we'll place you right over here for the time being. Don't have enough workers to work that yet, so we know we are going to need at least a little bit more housing, kind of like so. De doop and de doop. Okay. So this should allow me to start processing a pretty good amount of early game resources. 
All right, so we'll just go ahead and start dropping things off over here, kind of like that. And that gets me going at least to start. The very basic resources are now being worked on. We will need to get more population than beyond just this, so let's build out at least one more house for now, get an input in there. Now we need to start worrying about food. So I'm gonna come over here to gathering. We're gonna place down some potato farms, right? And let's place, let's say, one, two, and three. Can't quite do three because you don't have enough planks. Two will have to be good enough for the moment. I do, however, want to place down a food plant. So let's go ahead and place one right there. Don't have enough workers yet, but if we can get enough food, I'm sure that will solve itself. And there we go. Now these per potato plants are gonna start getting some per potatoes and then process them into, you guessed it, proper food. There we go. So there's gonna be like five, I think, per potato farms for every one food plant. It takes a lot to actually keep these things full, but for the moment, that's the best I can do. Now we're running a deficit on power. So we're gonna need to go ahead and work on that in a minute. Uh, let's see, first things first, so I need to increase the size of my population a little bit so that we can, ah, I don't have enough planks still, boo, all right. You know what, while we wait for some of these resources to gather up, never mind. now we're an outpost. Okay, I was waiting to see if we would get our, um, get our population up. Now we should be able to build a power generator. There it is, okay. So this is how you can actually start generating a bit more power. If we place down one of these, let's say over, I don't really care too much, how about right here? There we go, now we have enough power. The only problem with these power generators is you can't place a lot of them next to each other, so you gotta space them all out, but that's fine. All right, while some resources start uh, generating, let's keep looking around, clear out some more mobs, see if we can find some more nodes. For example, I do see another Bloodwood node nearby, which is fantastic, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that in a little bit. Don't worry too much if you're taking some damage. If you actually hit the C key, you can go to crafting and make a makeshift repair kit, which I'll go ahead and craft one now, for example. And then hitting I, I can go to inventory and assign this here. And if I just hit the one key, I'll basically use a health pack and get myself some extra health. No problem at all. I'm just exploring around right now and trying to gather up some little odds and ends resources and find out what else is going to be around me. Another Bloodwood node. Fantastic. Ooh, an ancient tech ruin. Okay, that's something we'll explore once I clear this all out. If you look at the top left, by the way, you can see how many days or cycles have passed. And over time, our threat level is going to start going up. And what that means is every once in a while, we're going to have a wave of these little dreps coming to attack me. We'll want to place down some static defenses before that does happen. This guy's actually big and scary. I want to kill you real quick. There we go. And let's use the repair kit. There we go. Uh, and eventually these uh, threat levels do go up, and that means that the waves get progressively harder. Until at some point, you're going to reach a point where you actually cannot hold off the enemies any further, and you really need to get the heck out of here. And that's a fun little twist to this game. That platform with our dream engine, it's actually a floating city, hence why we are called Nomad Cities. It can fly. So if you look up over here, you can see we have a takeoff option. There is weight that is currently on the platform in the city. And if we have enough carrying power that we can actually take off using some fuel and basically leave this map in favor of going to a new map, resetting the threat level, and maybe finding totally different resources which we will use in order to progress, which is kind of cool. All right, by now we should actually have a pretty good amount of resources and such to work with. One more thing that I want to make beyond a quick other per potato farm. Let's do that real quick. There we go. We want to place down something here called a tar extractor. And a tar extractor is going to uh, basically take some star tar out of the air and send it back into my base. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this off. This is a pretty unused conveyor belt as is. And that's useful because, oh, see, now we're at threat level one. See, this is useful though, the star tar here, which is right here, star stuck tar, because we can use that at the research lab in order to start researching some new and improved technology. So let's go ahead and place one right here, for example, using Featherstone and some planks. And we're gonna create another output right here for the star stuck tar, just like so. Now I don't have quite enough workers, uh, unfortunately, and we're running a little bit low on planks, so this is gonna get kind of annoying. Also note that I'm not getting anywhere near as much flux anymore. You do get flux from having a larger population, but another thing we could do is start placing down these flux vats, which just costs some planking and some maintenance and some workers, and that starts generating extra flux for us just outright, which is useful. Uh, not absolutely crucial right now, but it is definitely useful. Uh, let's start looking over here. I want to take a look at this ancient tech rune and show you what's going on here. So 
I guess the lore basically is that once upon a time, uh, there were grand cities and the dreps kind of killed everything. And we are surviving only because we have a nomad city, but there are ruins all across the world. If you look at this tech ruin here, we can either try to craft something special or we can scrap this for some resources. I'll be honest on the first map, I think it's always worth scrapping, but in this case, I'm gonna go for craft and just see what my options are. If we get enough resources, old world scraps, upgrade materials, or starwood, and or uh, all and starwood, sorry, we can make an acid fist bomb, which is a special melee weapon that does AOE splash damage. Snipe bow would take some stuff that doesn't exist on this map, feather crystal, and a smoker, single use device that camouflages the city's presence, restoring 10 cycles worth of threat. Or we could just make some extra fuel so we'll be able to take off again in the future. Honestly, not a bad idea. Um, I don't have the resources to really take advantage of any of the crafting options right now, so I'm going to be ignoring that. Another Bloodwood node. All right, so we should have absolutely zero problems coming up with planks. I'm going to go ahead and start building some more plank generation, I think. Though, do be aware, there's a delicate balancing act in this game, trying to manage your food, your power, and your workers. So just because you can get, let's say, four Bloodwood nodes working simultaneously does not mean that you should. And actually, before I forget, let's take a look at the uh, research over here. So now that we have a research lab that is being supplied with research, let's go ahead and spend it. We can learn how to make, let's say, a workshop which will allow us to start crafting the uh, upgrade materials we will need to increase the infrastructure of our city. So we'll go ahead and select that as a technology. I also would like to be able to process the bodies of the DREP into flux if there's an emergency. And then beyond that, maybe we should go for um, Starwood, plus maybe we can start making Starwood out of Bloodwood, and so on. We'll just queue up a few of these different technologies. There are a lot of things that you will research, and not all of this will occur on one map. You will not survive that long. Don't get too excited. So we are definitely going to have to come back to the research in future maps. In the meantime, let's get some more power figured out, and then, yep, more population. Oop, okay, we have our first raid approaching for the DREP. It's actually coming from the direction of the map that I'm already kind of located on. All right, fair enough. So we are going to want to set up some basic static defenses. Fortunately, I don't have any nodes that will be exposed, but I really don't want to lose all of my farms. So we could place down some wooden turrets, which do a bit of splash damage whenever they do hit, which can be nice. I'll go ahead and place, let's say, one here. And to be honest, we probably only need one for the first round. Beyond that, though, uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and expand out our build range a little bit, kind of like so. I love the aesthetic, by the way, of the Tesla Towers. That's just kind of exciting to me. Let's go ahead and place down a quick gate so I'll be able to get through if needed. And then place down some walls to try and discourage any uh, enemies from attacking over here if possible. All right, so we'll be seeing them on the way in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and start preemptively clearing out some other little guys since I'm kind of just sitting back and waiting anyway. Look for a few other resources on the map. Uh, I will say combat right now is very, very basic. The good news is over time we will be able to research some upgrades to armor, better crossbows, better punchy punch, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we will be able to make ourselves better at combat, but overall it's still going to be a very basic function. All right, so the raid is on the way, and I accidentally drew some unwanted extra attention. Once these guys get your scent, they pretty much never seem to want to leave you alone. So are you guys going to attack from this direction? or Yeah, they are. Okay, so let's just go ahead and sit back and do a bit of damage before they even get up to my turrets. Not that I'm that worried, but you can get some free hits in. You might as well. All right, let's go ahead and run before I get hurt. There we go. And we should be able to start clearing a lot of these guys out, just like so. Let's take a look at our research up over here. So we now have a couple of different researches already done. I'm going to queue up some more direct processing, better tar generators, and so on. Let's just go ahead and keep working on some of the basics. Second wave is on the way. They usually only come in two waves. So if we can deal with this, then we should be golden. Oh, wow. I drew a lot more attention than I meant to. Ha 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 ha. Oops. That said, really still shouldn't be any problem at all. And there we go. All right. Good thing that was only threat level one, though, because that was pretty easy for us to deal with. It's going to get a lot harder sometime soon. Let's go ahead and place down another little power plant over here, make sure we get a bit more. And we are still running low on food. Gosh dang. Yeah, food can be a little bit disproportionately tough to come up with, I do find. But either way, all right, so we got research for Starwood and such done as well. That's fan flip fantastic. How we do on workers? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, we are, we are getting kind of 
bottlenecked over here on our Bloodwood. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the um, Bloodwood node is not going to be a perfect infinite source. At some point, its base resources are going to go away and will start only producing at half speed. So one node isn't going to last you for very long at some point. These three probably will be able to process most of it. But if we wanted to go a little faster, something we could do is try upgrading the Wood Warper, which increases the production speed by 50%, but it does also increase the flux and power upkeep and take some extra workers. So you have to decide whether or not you think that's gonna be worth it to you. Getting plenty of workers and stuff is definitely a challenge, and we know we're gonna need a bit more of the flux because already I'm starting to run a little low. So let's spend some power and some workers to try and increase that flux capacity up a little bit more. Now, something that can be helpful on occasion, if you want to go into space and then press the M key, you can actually move around some of your buildings. The only exception is actually your defensive buildings. You can move them around during normal times, but if a raid is approaching, you can't reposition the same towers, which would be admittedly a little bit overpowered. All right, so something else I want to build before I forget is a workshop, which I guess I'll go ahead and place right over... Mm, let's just go ahead and say here for now, even though I don't think it's the most efficient placement. And actually, let's go ahead and also place down another house. I think we have just enough food to make that work. All right. So a workshop is going to start producing some upgrade materials, which, as I said, is going to allow us to start uh, manufacturing, uh, start making some infrastructure upgrades, which I'll try to show you what that means in just a little bit. I also feel like we need another stone worker because so far this is... Um, well, not going quite fast enough for my taste, so let's go ahead and do something kind of like that. And yeah, we're going to need even more housing. That's that's fine, no problem, we can handle that. Let's just go ahead and get some extra food probably going off in this direction, kind of like so. Perfect. And we're going to need some extra potato farms and so on. Yeah, the, the needs just go on and on. Every time you make one upgrade, you can expect to have to make several more. I mean, case in point, I don't even have enough workers to place down another power plant right now. But we know we're going to need it, and if I try to get some more workers, we're going to need more food. So, like, finding the exact balance is definitely a bit of a trick in this game. No doubt about it. Ooh, okay. An infrastructure upgrade is available. All right. So we also have a raid approaching down here in the bottom right. And, of course, now we're at threat level three, so that's a bit scary. Um, let's see. What was the uh, infrastructure button again? Was it the information? No, there's a way to do it. Hang on. Upgrade infrastructure K. That's the key I'm looking for. All right. So this is going to spend some of our upgrade modules over here in order to increase the value of our city in some way or another. For example, if I wanted to toss an unassigned point into gathering, we could increase our refining and harvesting production speed by 5%, which seems reasonable enough to me. Uh, I also could really benefit from some extra flux production, so I think I might do that instead for power and flux. But there we go. So now we have some of that. If we go ahead and do an upgrade like this, we gain an extra point, like so, and we can spend it on a perk, or we can continue upgrading each of these different levels. Since I've got level 1 administration, we have some new options here. We can increase our production speed for upgrade materials by 10%. We can go for more research, faster research, or we can have extra housing capacity for every house, which seems pretty good. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Let's go for some extra housing capacity. That way I don't have to build as many houses, though I imagine we're still going to need an absolute ton of food. By the way, yeah, I'm just sending a bunch of raw bloodwood logs into our dream engine over here, and I'm just sending more of it over here into our existing infrastructure. That way, uh, I don't have to just rebuild all of this stuff. In fact, I actually think I might want to get myself Another wood warper, kind of like so. Let's expand this out and increase some production. And there we go. Okay. So I need plenty of planks because we are about to have some issues with attacks. I've only got 22 at the moment. That's not really enough. I'm going to go to resources here. I'm going to start crafting some more out of the nightmare juice that I have gathered from the drep. Or I could use the drep dusts, right? Both forms of remains of the drep. I'm going to go ahead and just craft a whole bunch of planks as I know that I'm going to need them in a minute. Let's get some defenses. Now, I don't know if they're going to be attacking from up this way or over this way. Probably over here, if I had to guess. The downside of that being that I don't have the build and network for that. Let's see if I can maybe expand out the Tesla network over here, perhaps. Nice good bottleneck right here. If they veer over to the left, I think this is where I'm going to place down some defensive turrets and make my stand. So let's just pay attention to this for a second and see where they're going. Nope. Instead, it looks like they are going up over this way. Okay, fair enough. So they're probably going to get bottlenecked right here then. Let's go ahead and quickly just place down some simple... Ah, crap. 
crap. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Give me a minute. I wasn't ready. Hang on. Enemies nearby. No, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. You guys are being mean. Hang on. Punchy punch. They're destroying all my flux stuff. We need to destroy this nice and quick. I'm kind of regretting not having... Whoop! Some extra upgrade kits. Let's go ahead and craft one of those. Maybe two of them real quick and use it. Ah, no, I got an emergency teleport. All right. Well, um, so now enemy threat has gone up, and I just spent a lot of flux. This is still not the absolute worst, but I obviously goofed this up because I did not set up quite fast enough. Let's fix that now by going for at least a couple of these towers, and then uh, we'll place down some walls this way to try and delay them. Okay, that's the best that I can do. Let's just go ahead and take a few shots at him. All right, that was dumb. That was dumb. But you know what? I'm still learning how to play this game sometimes. And, uh, well, uh, you're going to make mistakes. That's just sort of what happens. This way, though, we should be completely fine. We'll survive this next wave. No problem at all. Let's go ahead and delete all this and refund the costs. And I'll be able to build those again somewhere else a little bit later. Okay, I'd like to go ahead and start manufacturing something called star wood. And for that to work, I'm going to want to place down another wood warper. I'll just go ahead and place it close to the base for now. Never mind, I can't. We don't have enough flux. Yeah, it, flux can sometimes be a little bit difficult to keep on top of. It says we're making a big profit, but it doesn't actually seem to be coming in very, very quickly. And this is where having lots of extra workers and power can become very valuable to start placing down a lot more of these flux vats. There we go. We'll place that down right here. So I want to upgrade you. Again, going to take more flux than I currently have available. Let's uh, try to expand our capacity out a little bit like so. So hopefully we make a fair bit more. And let's go ahead and place in a quick little bar right here. This will be for Bloodwood Planks. This will be for some Star Stuck Tar. And this is going to be an output. I want to upgrade you to level 2 the second I have enough flux. There it is. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and change your output to Starwood, like so. Okay. So that's going to take the Bloodwood Logs. Sorry, not Planks. My bad. We do not need the Planks. This is one reason to store up lots of these logs. Here we go. There we go. Okay. So using the Star Tar Plus... Some logs, now we are creating something here called Starwood, which is like an upgraded version of the planks. That's going to be necessary because I want to make some upgrades for my tiny. That's going to take some Starwood and some Flux, but it's going to increase how much damage I can do just from punching things. I'll also be able to use it to make better repair kits if I find myself needing a lot more health. Ooh, here's a different little enemy. Little crawling sporth shooting thing. Oh, that seems like a load of fun for me. Barrel of laughs, okay. So I guess there are going to be some more enemies that will gradually be introduced into the game. Uh, I have no idea how many already exist. I've really only had to fight those three so far. And again, remember that this is just an early access title. A lot more does intend to be released over time. And I believe the developers have already given a roadmap for exactly what we can expect in the future, which is always appreciated. It gives us something to look forward to. Now, we've got a potential disaster on our way over here. Another very high-level wave is on its way. I have managed to place down three of these towers, so hopefully these guys will do a lot. Not sure if we'll be able to survive with this, but if we don't, then I'm going to need to make an emergency takeoff with the city. I think we can survive this with three towers. That does seem completely reasonable to me. Let's actually wait. Three waves? Ooh. Three waves. No likey. Uh, looks like we do have another infrastructure upgrade available. Let's go ahead and do that now. Um, I'd really love to get some extra flux production probably more than anything else, if I'm being honest. But maybe we go for some gathering? Could be good. Or we could go, of course, for some extra research and stuff. Ah! Eh, what do I want? Um... Gathering. Let's go ahead and get a point in the gathering and just increase our production and stuff up by 5%. That will have to do. We can go into repair mode here, by the way. It just spends a bit of flux, but we can fix up our walls, which should be just fine for me. All right. So we'll survive another wave, and on the plus side, there is a whole load of drept carcasses that we can gather and turn those into whatever resources we need. And let's be honest, it's probably going to be flux. Okay, another raid is approaching. This time it is going to be level six. Uh, this is going to get a little on the spooky side. Hmm. I don't think I want to take off yet, though, if I'm being honest. I still think we have a chance at holding out. So I think they're going to approach over here in this bottom left area. If I can get over there fast enough, maybe we can construct some defenses. That said, I am taking... My sweet, sweet time in getting over here, aren't I? Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete some of this. Let's make our stand here if we can. 
I'm going to place down, let's say, a... Uh, oh, crap. I forgot. Hang on. We need a Tesla tower here and a Tesla tower there. There we go. Okay. Let's uh, not fall to that again, shall we? Okay. So, a wall there and maybe an extra set of walls here will be good. And then one, two, three... Oh, that's all I can afford the second and number four. There we go. Okay. So we should, I think, be ready for this as long as this is, in fact, where they come up. If they go up over here, I'm pretty dead. I'm just going to take off immediately. Another thing I want to go ahead and do is start making the Starwood Reinforcement. We'll craft that, and let's get a Spiked Fist. There we go. Then go to our inventory and swap out our items like so. So now we have a little bit better armor and punching power. Please tell me you guys are coming over here. I really hope you are. Uh, moment of truth. Do they take the block right over here? Actually, they may go right here. Crap, I think they are. Yep, take off time. Okay, okay. And you know what? Uh, cancel that, everything. Uh, it's time to go ahead and start deleting as much as we can over here. We are about to be under attack in a big, big way. We need to make sure that we are on uh, the... Oh, ah, ah, derp, 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 derp. Too many enemies nearby. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang uh, on. Build, build, and... Um, Build up over here. I don't care. There we go. Okay, we got we got a few. We happen to have some walls nearby, but I think we're going to be leaving. So while they are going nuts, we're going to go ahead and start dismantling pretty much everything, salvaging as many of these resources as we can that cannot fit onto our city. So this is pack up and run away time. Pack up and run away time. Get all this back. Have as many resources together as we can. Okay, so we got a few more seconds to hold out. Holy crap, that's a lot. That is a lot. They're going to do some serious damage. We're barely going to get out of this, I think, but we're going to lose some stuff in the process. That's fine, though. As long as we have the resources and as long as my dream engine survives, I'll be all right. Give me a second, and here we go. Woo, okay, that got close, and that was because I completely misjudged which direction they were coming from. I did not have time to set up some additional defenses. All the more reason to actually be watching for those choke points and setting up some defenses a little bit sooner than I did. All right, now that we are in the sky, safely away, and ready to move on to the next map, we can see several different options. The number of skulls represents the difficulty of the map and how many enemies you're going to get, starting threat, and so on, but we can see what resources exist on these maps. So, for example, we have some raw featherstone and crystal, but no bloodwood. Hopefully, we have enough of that stored up at this point. Over here, we have... Captus as well, a meaty fruit. Or over here, more bloodwood logs and featherstone if we so desire. There's also some tech ruins. Stable liquids, which I have no idea how to exploit. And apparently, flux production on this map goes up a little bit as well. Sticking around in the Blightlands is probably the right way to go. So let's go ahead and move our city over there. I haven't quite finished with all the technologies and stuff I'm going to need just involving the bloodwood and the uh, featherstone. So I don't see any reason not to go ahead and just land the city. And you can see that we now have kept everything that we had previously, but I've lost all my production buildings. So all the more reason we are going to need to take everything that we've already accumulated, and we have to rebuild all my infrastructure for this second map. People are dying! Ridiculous. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, though. This does give you some sense of what the game has to offer. Obviously, there are a lot more production chains that I have not had a chance to explore. But, now that we're on a new map with a lower level, we'd have some time to kind of build out, explore some more, get more resources, and keep building upon that until we go to a new place, get new resources, experience new threats, and so on. Pretty fun idea for a game, if and you were to ask me. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, then I would ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.